everyone, it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video I'm going to show you how to make this really cute coffee cup coaster. Now I designed this pattern about seven or eight years ago and we decided to go ahead and retest it, take some new pictures and make a video to go along with the pattern. Now you can find this pattern on my blog and I'll put that link down in the notes underneath this video. The coaster measures about four inches by five and a half inches so it's the perfect size to fit your coffee cup. And what you're going to need is some cotton yarn. Now these are all peaches and cream cottons but you don't have to use just those. You can use any cottons that you want. I've got solid this variegated is Hobby Lobby's. I love this cotton. This is also a Hobby Lobby basic cotton. And this is the red peaches and cream. You can use any cotton yarn that you have on hand. As a matter of fact, this is a great project to make something useful to use up those leftover cottons. Now, you can also use acrylic medium weight number four yarns if you want to. A lot of times you may just want a coaster to protect your wood table or surfaces, and it's okay, or if you just want to make it for decoration. But if you're going to use it with a hot cup of cocoa or coffee or tea, I really recommend that you use cotton. That way, if you dribble a spill, the cotton will absorb that coffee or that hot liquid and not ruin your table. With acrylic, it doesn't absorb like cotton does, but again, it's just your preference. I'm going to be using this sort of purpley yarn for my cup, and I'm going to use this light beige for the coffee. I really like to use this one because it has the different shades, and if you look here, you can see it looks like I have a little creamer in my coffee. This one I use just the regular beige. Here's another one, and this one where I use that variegated. I, re I really prefer this, but it's really difficult to see the dark when you're crocheting on the video. So I'm going to go ahead and use this light beige. And then I'm going to make this little flower that I show you in the center with this pink. We're going to be crocheting today with our H hook, and it's a 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. You'll also need your needle and your scissors. We're going to begin with a slip knot and then we're going to chain 12. There's my 12 chains. I'm going to begin by stitching a single crochet and the second chain from the hook. There's our first one, here's our second one. We'll go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through both loops. We'll do this all the way across. One single crochet in each of the chains across. And we'll have 11 single crochets because we chained 12 and we began stitching in the second chain from the hook. There we go. 11 single crochets. We're going to chain one, and our chain one does not count as a stitch. It's just a turning chain, so when we turn, it lays nice. We're going to begin right in this first single crochet, and we're going to stitch two single crochets. Then we'll stitch one single crochet, and each of the stitches across until we reach that last single crochet. We're 
We're at the last single crochet and we're going to stitch two single crochets in that last stitch. Chain one and turn. So our first row we had 11 single crochets. We added a stitch at the beginning and the end of the row so now we have 13 single crochets and we're going to repeat this. We're going to place two single crochets in the first stitch. Then we'll single crochet in each stitch across. And when we get to the last single crochet on this row, we'll stitch two single crochets. Chain one and turn. So now we went from 11 to 13 to 15 single crochets on our third row. All right, we're done increasing. And by increasing, we made the shape of the bottom of our coffee cup. All right, now for row four, we're only going to place one single crochet in that first stitch. And then we'll stitch one single crochet in each stitch across we're not going to add one to the end, and so our stitch count will be the same. It will be 15 single crochets. Chain one and turn. Row one, we had 11. Row two, we had 13 single crochets. Row three, we had 15. And row four, we have 15. And now what we're going to do for the next six rows rows 5 through 10, we're going to repeat row 4. Chain 1, one single crochet in each of those 15 stitches, chain 1 and turn and repeat. So we're going to repeat row 4 for 6 more rows. I've stitched those additional six rows, repeating row four, and that brings me to row 10. Now we're going to change colors to put in our coffee color, but we're not going to tie off our purple yarn or our main color yarn. At the end of row 10, don't chain one. We're going to join our color in first and then chain one. And the reason you do that is because if you go ahead and do your chain one in your main color, you'll have one little stitch because it's that chain one or a little bump of color that doesn't make it look nice and neat. Anytime you're working on a project where you're changing colors, you should always do your chain one, two, three, or four in the color you're changing to. All right, so what we're going to do, we chained one and we're going to stitch the first two stitches together. It's called a single crochet decrease or stitching two single crochets together. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in the first stitch and pull up a loop and then we'll go in the next stitch and pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook instead of the two. Yarn over and go through all three of those loops. And what we did is we decreased by one. Now we're going to go and stitch one single crochet in each stitch across until we reach those last two stitches. I've single crocheted across till I've reached the last two stitches. And we're going to stitch a single crochet decrease are stitching two single crochets together with these last two stitches. So we'll go in the first stitch, pull up a loop. We'll go in that last stitch and pull up a loop. Three loops on our hook, yarn over, and go through all three. And by doing that, we decreased a stitch at the beginning and the end of our work. Chain one and turn. Now for this row, we're just going to stitch one single crochet in each of the stitches across. I 
I single crocheted in each of the single crochets across and now we're going to cut our yarn that we're using for our coffee. All right, and we'll need to weave those in. We're going to take our purple yarn or the color we're using for the main color of our coffee cup and just bring that up, being careful not to pucker it on the side here. And we're going to be stitching over that with single crochet, so don't worry about that little loop of yarn. We're going to chain one and turn. And on this row, what we're going to do is we're going to stitch a single crochet and each stitch across and then we're going to single crochet evenly all the way back up around our coffee cup. So the top of this is simple. We're just going to stitch a single crochet with our main color in each of these stitches across. Then when we get to the corner, we're going to begin single crocheting evenly down the side. So we're going to turn, and what I like to do when I'm stitching single crochets and I'm stitching down the side is try to put one single crochet in the end of each row. And it's real important that you try to get in the stitches and not the holes. And there is an, a set number of stitches you're just going to eyeball it and do the best that you can and try to stitch evenly. And you're going to look at it and make sure that you don't have too much gap between your stitches and that they aren't all bunched up. You want them to lay nice and flat as we move around our coffee cup. And now we're at the bottom edge. Move that string out of the way. And we can just place our single crochets in those chains that we stitched in. Working across the bottom of our cup. Once we've gone across the bottom of our cup, we're going to repeat on this side what we did over here. We're just going to put single crochets, stitching evenly, trying to work in the stitches and not the holes. And the reason we try not to stitch in the holes is because, see how I stitched in that hole and it left a great big gaping hole? We don't want that. We want to try to go in the stitch. There we go. And that way we can kind of help close up that hole and also make a nice even row around. And there might be a time when you have to stitch in a hole, but you want to try not to. Let's see, that's the back, so we're going to pull that in. I'm working my way back up to the top of my coffee cup. Now, right here is where we pulled that string up where we reattached. Just move your strings from your coffee in and make sure you stitch right over get in there. That yarn that we pulled up. That's a tight stitch. There we go. And we're just stitch over it. That way it's not seen, it's tied down, and it's nice and tidy. All right, I'm going to join to that first single crochet. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn. All right, this is the back side, this is the front side. So I'm going to go ahead and take these strings and just pull them to the back and we can weave those in later. All right, so now we're going to slip stitch in the next two single crochets moving back down and then we're going to chain. Let me look on my notes, see how many. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, then we're going to join. Here's here's our bottom where we did our single crochet. One, two, three, four. To the single crochet lined up at the fourth row. And this is another place where you might want to eyeball it. Make sure you like where you put it. And then we'll single or slip stitch in the next. So we we slip stitched on the fourth to join, and then we slip stitched in the next one. We're going to chain one and turn. Okay, here we're back to the front of our coffee cup coaster. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, skip this slip stitch and go right in that first chain and stitch a single crochet. And then we'll stitch a single crochet in each of those chains. And this is the cute little handle that's on the side. There we go. And we'll our last stitch and then we'll just slip stitch right in that slip stitch. Cut our yarn and tie off. And then we'll make sure that's to the back. So I'm just going to do a little There we go. And we'll pull that to the back. And we do have a little bit of tidying up to do. But there's the basic coffee cup coaster. And you can add the little flower, and I'll show you how to do that. But first, I'm going to take a couple seconds and weave in all my ends. So here's our cute little coffee cup coaster. And I want to show you how to add that little flower in the middle if you want to. Now, remember, when you're adding maybe an applique or a button, remember your coffee cup or glass is going to sit right in the center, and you don't want it rocking around. So make sure that's not anything that's going to stand up and make an issue. And that's kind of why I decided to do the little lazy daisy in the middle. So what I do is I just fold it in half and fold it in half again and find the center. You can count it off if you want to. I just don't. All right, so we're going to bring this up. We're going to leave a tail in the back. And then we're just going to make three or four petals. So what I do is I make a little loop where I want it to be. I go back in. And then I come up where that where I want my little loop or flower petal to be. And then I go right in that same spot that I came out of. One thing to remember is you want to make sure that you go in a stitch, not a hole, or you might lose your petal. All right, so we're going to just kind of go this way. Go about right there. So we'll go down. Come back up. If you want to measure these out, you can, or you can just eyeball it like I am. All right, there's my second petal. The next one, we're going to come this way. So we'll go down, come up in that stitch, not a hole. And there's my three petals. Now it's up to you how big you want to make your petals. And then if you want to make a little center to your petals, I just add a little French knot. One, two. I normally wrap three, but with the cotton, I like to just do two because it gets too bunchy. I'm going to go right back in there. Make sure you do those wraps loosely. And there's the center of my flower. All right, so let's turn it over. And what I do is a big no-no. I just tie a knot. And you know, I like to do three. And I do it this way because I think it keeps it a lot neater. And I've never had any trouble with it coming undone. Now, if you're worried with that little knot's not gonna hold, add a little fray check or fabric glue to it and let it dry. All right, so now my little cup has a fun little flower on it. So here's our coffee cup coasters, and that is absolutely how easy it is 
to make these coasters. They're super fun to make and super fun to give. <music>